Number 11. From the balanced molecular equations, write the complete ionic and the net ionic equations for the following. And then we have letter A out of the bunch. So this equation is K2C2O4 aqueous plus BaOH2 aqueous, which will yield or produce 2 KOH aqueous and then BaC2O4 solid. Okie dokie. So we need to take this balanced molecular equation and thank goodness that it's balanced, right? We've done tons of problems about balancing equations, but now we just have to take this and turn it into an ionic, a complete ionic and a net ionic. Okay, well, what, what are complete ionic and net ionic equations? Basically, this is going to tell us what is actually happening when these two molecules come together. Now, in the grand scheme of things, you will produce KOH aqueous and then BAC2OH, uh, BAC2O4 solid. However, we want to just know what ions are forming solids or maybe making a gas or a liquid. That's your ionic equations. The ionic equations always stem from ions, right? It has the term ion in there. And ions are the charged atoms. In your molecular equations, there's no charged atoms here. So we have to get that information. Now, this could come from two ways. You knowing your charges of your elements on the periodic table and knowing your polyatomics. Remember, you have to memorize your polyatomics. Now, let's just say for the first one, right, it's K2C2O4. We want to find out what the ions are for this. Now, just know that when you have a compound, you will always have two ions. There's always going to be one break giving you two ions. Now, generally speaking, the break is usually going to come after the metal. Potassium here is the metal. So I know that how I form this compound, remember, when you make a compound, you always have something that was positive coming together with something that was negative. And standard notation, the positive is always in the front, right? Now, they tell me that I have two here, right? I have two potassiums. That means that since I have multiple atoms for my second part, that this had to have been a polyatomic. It's not just one atom, right? It's not just one element. It's carbon and oxygen. So I know that this whole thing, since there's no parentheses, I only have one of this polyatomic. Now, what you can do is, you know how we make compounds, we crisscross the number down, right? So let's just say that this one was a, a plus one and this one was a minus two, right? The one would come down telling me that I needed one of whatever element this is, and the two would crisscross and tell me that I needed whatever element this was. You can do the reverse. The subscripts will tell you what you started with. So we could either say that since potassium is in group one on the periodic table and all group one ions have a plus one charge, that's cool. However, we can take the subscript of the other guy and crisscross it back up. And there you go. That's how you also get the positive one. This works like 90% of the time because sometimes the other 10% you simplified your charges. Remember, ionic guys, you simplify your charges. But we just check it with our knowledge on the periodic table. So that means for the polyatomic C2O4, what charge was it? Well, I either know it by memorizing my polyatomics, but I see that the potassium had a 2. So that crisscrossed up to tell me that this is oxalate. That was a negative two charge. Remember, the ones in the back are always negative. So whether you say two minus or a negative two, it really doesn't matter. Okay, now let's do the same idea on the second set. So I'll do it in a different color, I guess. BA, right? I can look on the periodic table and see that BA is in the second group. So it's a plus two, but I noticed that my polyatomic here was a two. So it crisscrossed back up to tell me. So you'll get the same answer regardless which method you go. The, the 
the cutoff is obviously here, right? BA and then the polyatomic OH, which is hydroxide. And OH is always a negative 1. But there was one barium, so you crisscross that up, right? So here are your four ions. The same ions are going to be on the other side, right? KOH, K, which was a plus 1, gets broken down into OH minus 1, right? And then for this one, the break would be after that metal, right? Barium and then oxalate. You only have to get the total uh, ions on one side of the equation. Whether you do it on the right or the left side, I don't really care. Just make sure that you, you know, get them. This is going to be in like our little, you know, cheat sheet. I always like to write the ions uh, before I do any ionic or net ionic equations because that's the hardest part, right? If you do that, the rest of it is easy. So let me just quickly write this over. So our molecular equation is what they gave us here. So we have K2, C2O4, which is aqueous plus Ba, OH2, which was aqueous, and that yielded 2KOH, that was aqueous, and Ba, C2O4, solid. Okay, now we need to know which ones are actually going to break down into the ions, which ones are going to dissolve. The rule of thumb is that only, so I'll put that over here, only aqueous compounds will dissolve. So solids, liquids, and gases do not dissolve, okay? So only aqueous guys will dissolve, do not. So only aqueous will dissolve, and let's see, I have an aqueous over here, so this compound I have to break up into its ions. This compound is aqueous, so I have to break this up into its ions. This is aqueous, so I have to break this up. But then this is a solid, so I leave it. So I'll make me make that a different color. Okay. Now, when we break it up into its components, right, or the ions, we do the breaks just like we did before. If you have something that is aqueous, it will always break up into its two components. And we knew the break was right here. So potassium is going to be on one side, and the oxalate is going to be on the other. For barium hydroxide, the break was here. Barium is going to break up and hydroxide is going to break up. For potassium hydroxide, the break is K and OH. But since this is a solid, I cannot break that up. When you do this, you're now going to be forming your complete ionic equation. So that's always the next one. The complete ionic is next. And then from that information, we could finally get the net ionic equation. Okay, so this is where these ions come really in handy. All you have to do is just notice who you're talking about. So in this case, I'm talking about potassium. So you have to write it in its ionic form. And here's the answer. So all you have to do is just say potassium plus one. And then C2O4, that's this idea, right? Or not idea, but that's this ion. So I say C2O4, and they're being added to one another. This is a minus two, right? But now you just have to say the state again. So they're aqueous because they broke down. So you just have to be like monotonous. But now you just have to tell me how many of each do I have? Now, how many potassiums did I have here? Oh, I had two of them. But technically, when you make an ion, this is the form. You're only allowed to have these forms, right? I can't change this potassium and put like a three down here. That's not the ionic form of potassium. However, I can add or put coefficients. I have two potassiums, so I have to say I have two K pluses or plus ones. But now here I have just one oxalate, right? The, the polyatomic is C2O4. So I don't really have to put a one here, but I can if I want. And then you proceed forward. Now I'm going to break barium hydroxide down. We did the hard part. We just rewrite it. So I have Ba plus two. 
that was from this. And then hydroxide is OH minus 1. You just have to say that they're both aqueous because you broke them down. And now you just have to pay attention as to how many you have. Maybe I will put that over there. Okay. So if I go back up here, I had only one barium, so I don't have to do anything here. But for my hydroxides, I had two of them, right? Two hydroxides. So what number am I going to put here? Oh, a two. And now I just proceed on. Here's another aqueous, so I have to break it down, K and OH. So I did all my hard work. I just find the, the ions. So K was a plus 1, plus OH was a minus 1. And maybe let's go like that. States, so they were aqueous. I broke it down. And then number. There's a 2 in front of the K and the OH. So how many do I have for both of these? I had two of them. So I have to say two K pluses and two OH minuses. And now I just continue, right? So this would be plus. Now, barium oxalate is a solid. I do not break that down. So I literally just write BAC2O4 solid. That's it. That's your complete ionic. So just write this down because you're going to see that we're going to be doing something with the complete ionic to get to the net ionic. However, this is your answer for the complete ionic. But now let's get the net ionic. Now what you have to do is you just have to analyze the ions that are on opposite sides of the yield sign. If you have the same ions on both sides, you have a spectator ion. And spectator ions get canceled out. So I'll just put that over here. Spectator ions get canceled. Now, who are our spectator ions in our complete ionic equation? They have to be exactly identical. So let's look. I have two K1, uh, two K pluses on this side, and I have two K pluses on this side. They're identical. So they will cancel. And that's why I say, the complete ionic, you have to write the 2K pluses. The net ionic, you do not. So in this case, my spectator was K plus 1. Are there any other ones? Let's see. Hmm. On the product side, I have a 2OH minus 1. And look, I have a 2OH minus 1. So that goes bye-bye, right? And now let's see. I have a Ba plus 1, but I don't have the ion. They're not identical. I have the compound here. I have C2O4 2 minus. However, I don't have the ion. So I can't cancel out anything else. Whatever is left over is your net ionic equation. And let me just put up, up top here that OH was also a spectator ion in this case. So the net ionic equation would be, and it, and it really doesn't matter who comes first, right? You could put the oxalate in the front or you could put the barium in the front. Generally speaking, they do do positives first and then negatives. It really doesn't matter because from math, you know, if you're adding two things, it doesn't matter whether you say two plus three or three plus two. It means the same thing. But let's just, just I'll just flip them on you just to show you that, yeah, you can do that and it would still be correct. So I'm just rewriting. It's as easy as that. I'm rewriting everything that I can that I didn't cancel out. And that is your full-blown net ionic equation. This is the only thing that is happening in this reaction. Everything else, all the other ions, are just chilling. They're not really reacting. They're just hanging out. They're watching. The only reaction that's going on is between the barium and the oxalate. And that's it. Guys, what do you think? Give this video a like if it helped you out, just to let us know that, you know, we're doing our job here. And... I hope to see you guys in the next lesson. Yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and that you're studying hard and you're doing well on your tests and quizzes. Let me know how you guys are doing and I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Okay, bye-bye.